mid right area. Desperately looking for the wire. Up with the birds on the outside. And it's going to be these two. Midnight area on the inside. Midnight area streaks to the wire to win Canada's race. For the second time in four years, Nicholas Gonzalez has trained the winner of Canada's most prestigious thoroughbred horse race. Peter Martin of Post Time Services recently visited with Nick to talk about Midnight Area and the Brooks feed that fueled this 2013 Queen's Plate champion. All right, we're here today with uh, Nick Gonzalez, the 2013 Queen's Plate winner. And uh, Nick, tell us, how long have you been uh, training thoroughbreds? Well, a person never likes to really give his age away, but if I say 40 plus years, I'll just say I started when I was very young. All right, fair enough. Now, how did you come to, to meet uh, or to know about Midnight Aria? Well, we were in Miami racing this year at Gulfstream, and uh, my a uh, couple of my clients, uh, Lou and Carlo Tucci, wanted me to look for some young horses that there was an upside and we could develop them. And uh, up comes this uh, Ontario bred, and there was some you know coincidences in this pedigree. They had owned the mother and had limited success with the mother, had sold it some years ago, but it sparked some interest. We were, it was by a stallion that we liked. And, uh, you know, so we get a claim slip ready for 35000 and uh, we go over to the races that day, and obviously, uh, physically, the horse had to pass my, uh, my uh, test of uh, liking it or not. And uh, fortunately for us, when the horse was being led over to the paddock, it was a big, good-looking horse. Uh, legs looked good, had a nice walk to him. We put the claim slip in. There was only one claim in for it, and uh, the rest turned out to be history. Wow, okay. So then how long have you been uh, training for Tucci Stables? I've been training for Lou and Carlo for some 10 years now. Uh, fortunately, uh, two very good owners love and have a passion for the sport and the industry and uh, you know we both got a common uh, way of thinking and uh, we've been very successful in those uh, 10 years. All right. Now what was it about Midnight Aria that really caught your eye when you were looking to, uh, to claim? Well first and foremost, I, and I told you earlier, he was a striking individual. Big, strong, good looking horse and was already proven that he could run on the turf course. So, you know, we hoped that he could transform his turf abilities to the synthetic track, which we have at Woodbine. And uh, that was the upside that we thought we had. And, uh, you know, he was a big horse that had only had a couple races. And, you know, I knew deep down from my 40 years plus experience <laughs> that uh, he was going to get a lot better with racing. And uh, as it turned out, two things happened. A, he did get a lot better with racing, and B, he took a liking to our poly track and turned out to be even better on that surface than he was on the turf. So when did you notice that uh, Midnight Aria had the potential to be a Queen's Plate uh, runner? Well, when we brought him back to uh, uh, Canada after his uh, winter uh, campaign at, at Gulfstream, we ran him in a couple of uh, prep races for the Queen's Plate. And even though he had only run third in both races, he was narrowly beaten. And, uh, you know, he was a front runner. He got pressured early in his pace and uh, ran two very creditable numbers. And obviously his speed figures were going up on the poly track. And, uh, you know, he was just getting better, getting better as we, uh, um, you know, made it to the Queen's Plate. And uh, a lot of good things happened that day. And uh, we got very lucky that day. Things went right for us. Mm -hmm. Now, what does a horse like Midnight Aria eat? Well, I told you before, he was a big strapping, good looking horse, like a 1,200 pound monster. And he's just one of those ones where we use the terms here at the racetrack, you know, we just couldn't never fill him up. You know, he could eat it as much as you could feed him, and obviously there's limitations as to how much you could give a horse in a day. But I could, you know, uh, truthfully tell you, he ate way, way more pro sport than the average horse. Yeah, Brooks pro sport. All right, now the first uh, Queen's Plate win was in 2010, and you got to meet the Queen, which would have been uh, just a, a moment, an extreme, a really special moment in your life. What is it about the 2013 Queen's Plate that stands out to you? Well, it was funny that you should ask, and uh, uh, you know that was over an overwhelming day, 2010, with Big Red Mike, another horse that was on Pro Sport, and. 
another big strapping horse that ate a lot more than the average horse too. Mm -hmm. And you know, that day was just, uh, it was one of those days that, uh, and I had said, and uh, many times after that day, you know, there'll never ever be anything in racing that would ever outdo that uh, Queen's Plate win on July the 4th of 2010 because of the hoopla and the Queen and everything like that. But, uh, you know, I was wrong. And when we won the race in <coughs> 2013, it did surpass that. And I just never thought it could happen, but it did. Well, congratulations and thank you very much. Thanks for supplying me with that wonderful feed and uh, we're just gonna try and do it again. To win and River Seven. They're off in the Queen's Plate. Spring in the air, and on the outside, a Kagan in those pink silks, and Midnight Arias down toward the rail as they move in front of us for the first time, and it's Midnight Area, as expected, to set the early pace. Congratulations, Nick and Martha.